Hello folks, Tom Clemens here, and I've been asked to do the 52 stories this week. I um, want to talk a little bit about uh, something called church family. Uh, now this is something that is relatively new to me. Um, it may surprise a lot of you to know that I grew up in a Mormon household, and during the course of different interactions and uh, through different individuals through that church, I became very disenfranchised with it. Stopped going to church when I was about 18 really didn't step uh, into a church until I was uh, well into my 20s, and that's because I met this lovely young woman called Jennifer Wellen, now Jennifer Clements, um, and she really brought me back into kind of the fold, and it was through the Lutheran church that I really discovered what this term church family uh, really means, warm, open, um, not judging, not uh, casting me down for uh, my opinions or my thoughts on certain things, and it was just very refreshing. And uh, when we moved here to Mankato, Minnesota, we set forth and looked for that new church family. And I think what really brought us towards Bethlehem is just, for one, the uh, the manger area. So my daughter, who is two, and it is very apparent that she is two, uh, can run and play and have a good time, and we're not judged for that. It's We're a normal family at our services and our daughters being two and I don't feel embarrassed to bring my daughter and I don't feel embarrassed to run up and chase her up and down the pews as I'm sure a lot of you have seen so it, it's refreshing in my experience with churches is that I don't feel ashamed it's I'm just a normal dad and a, a mom with me chasing our two-year-old daughter and I think that is fantastic and it just makes me feel like I am part of the family and so uh, for me and for my wife Jen and for our daughter Cora thank you and I hope you enjoyed that story. Well, good morning, Bethlehem, and welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday. I want to say thank you to the Hebrelin family who continues to be supportive in their prayers and their gifts as they uh, remember their parents. Uh, today we uh, honor Lorene Hebrelin. We uh, memorialize her as her family has sponsored our radio broadcast. So thank you to them. You know, it's difficult for me to know what to say after the events of this past week, beginning with the awful death of George Floyd and the subsequent unrest of those who seek justice peaceably and responsibly, as well as those who compound grief with arson and looting. As people of faith, we speak out of silence, not out of ideology or fear. And Jesus tells us that violence is not the answer whether by the knee of a man sworn to protect and serve, or by the rage of those who have suffered that injustice far too long, or by our apathy, enabling it to continue. It appeared to the disciples that tongues like fire set above them on that first Pentecost day. Fire is a, is a symbol of Pentecost, and I refer to it in my sermon this morning, but instead of being a destructive force like the fires that are uh, destroying the neighborhoods, the Holy Spirit instead brings warmth and light into this world. There is a line in an evening hymn which is called Now the Day is Over that I, I prayed many times over the years as I think about this world. The line goes, those who plan some evil from their sin restrain. And so we pray, we pray this Pentecost Sunday that the Holy Spirit might bring light and warmth and healing into our world. A few announcements before we start. Uh, congratulations to our graduating seniors. Uh, you will see some of their pictures. We didn't get pictures from all of them, but some of them sent them pictures. You will see them in our worship slides today. I invite you to pray for Glenn Saxton, who is nearing the end of this life and preparing for eternal life. 
I also invite you to pray for Jan Prowse as she mourns the death of her um, beloved husband, Howard. Uh, his uh, committal service was on Thursday, and we will celebrate his life at a later date. And then also, too, we ask you to pray for uh, Heather Hammond and her family as she mourns her mother's loss. We'll turn our hearts to worship with the order for confession and forgiveness. We're gathered this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
every day. For peace in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all. For this holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. That we may live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor. That we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. For peace in our hearts, for peace in our homes, for friends and family. For life and for love, for our work and our play. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. For your Spirit to guide, that you center our lives in the water and the Word. That you nourish our souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. ever-living God, you fulfilled the promise of Easter by sending the gift of your Holy Spirit. Look upon your people gathered in prayer, open to receive the Spirit's flame. May it come to rest in our hearts 
and heal the divisions of word and tongue, that with one voice and one song, we may praise your name in the joy and thanksgiving of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, Bethlehem families. Uh, it is time for our children's message, so I invite you to come a little bit closer, and I want to tell you a story about Pentecost. Today we start a new season in the life of our church, and you might be thinking, well, it's not a holiday today. Uh, you know, normally on Easter and Christmas and Advent, um, we have these bigger holidays where we are getting together and really celebrating, but today is form of celebration. It is a form of celebration of the Holy Spirit coming to be with us as God's people. And I want to tell you the story. Got to find my Bible. <laughs> Set it down. Uh, but I want you to follow along and to read it with your families in your Spark Bible as well. So it is on page 502. And Pentecost is all about the coming of God's Spirit to be with us. And I want to tell you a little about before, before God's Spirit came. These were um, God's disciples, God's people, who had, many of them had known, known Jesus uh, and were followers of Jesus. And before Jesus died, he said, God's Spirit will be with you. I will be with you no longer. Jesus is not, gonna, not alive anymore, but God's Spirit will come. And that was a promise he made to his people. And today... The promise is fulfilled, and we celebrate that in worship. So um, you'll see, if you read this story, uh, in God's fashion, uh, it doesn't come very quietly. God's Spirit comes in the form of flames above their heads of the disciples. It came through a rushing wind, and it came in the form of diverse languages. Uh, they realized that they could understand each other, even though that they were speaking different languages, which is pretty incredible to think about, right? And so what I love about this story in this version in your Spark Bible, it talks about that they remembered the story of Jesus. I imagine that they were feeling pretty afraid. Uh, maybe they were doubting or angry that Jesus was no longer there, that Jesus was not alive that the promise they had in him might not be fulfilled. I'm sure it wasn't a very fun time for them. And I'm sure it led to quarreling and being just angry at one another. But the story says that after they were reminded of Jesus's promises, of Jesus being with them, they remembered that it was time for them to begin a new life with God's spirit guiding them. They weren't gonna let fear or anger or being afraid or overwhelmed guide them any longer. They were gonna be guided by God's spirit. And so that is my prayer for us, that we may have the courage to be guided by God's spirit. I'm sure for the disciples, it was not easy. They were walking into a very unknown future, but they knew it was the future God was calling them to. And so I want to, I want to do a little activity with you. You should have gotten a uh, kit in, the, in your house, um, if you're a sixth grader or under, we dropped off little care packages, Pentecost care packages for you yesterday. And in those care packages, there was uh, an envelope. And an envelope said, don't open it until Sunday, until you worship with us. So now is the time for you to open it. And inside, you'll find something that looks like this. A little bit like, looks like a tissue paper, but it's not exactly that. And I invite you to, um, you can follow along as I do it and, and go outside and do it. Um, or you can wait till later, you can watch me do it, and then you can um, go outside later with your family and, and do it. But you can do this preparation part first. So you're gonna crush it up. You feel that weight of that anger of those disciples, that fear they were feeling. Now we're gonna open it back up, kind of like we're opening ourselves up to God's Holy Spirit to guide us. And then we're gonna create a little cylinder 
And you should have a base with you too. I have a little cardboard, but yours is, yours are colors as kids. Um, and I'm gonna light this on fire. But before I do, I wanna tell you a little bit something about fire. Fire is really scary. It's really dangerous. There's a reason why our parents say to us, don't play with fire, right? Because it can hurt people. And there are real consequences to that. So I don't want you to think that playing with fire is just fun. And that's only the only thing that God's spirit is up to. But fire can also represent power and new life. So if you've ever been to a big forest, uh, I went to Yellowstone National Park a few years ago, uh, you might have seen some trees that were burnt down. I saw that when I was at Yellowstone, and I remember looking at the trees and going, wow, it looks like there was just a forest fire there, uh, you know, a few days or months ago, and I knew that wasn't true because I would have heard it on the news. But, uh, and I looked it up, and I think it was there in the 70s or 80s that there was a forest fire. And so you could still see the destruction of those trees. Those trees were not going to grow back. But beneath the trees, you saw new plants and new life growing up from the soil. And what we know from science is that forest fires are actually necessary. They, uh, although we try to prevent them and we know they are dangerous and we don't want them to get out of control, we know that they're necessary to bring new life into the soil. And um, when, when there is a forest fire, it opens the seeds and drops them in and they can begin new life from from that, um, from that fire and because of that fire. And I think that's a really beautiful, to rem uh, beautiful thing to remember that even though fire is scary and dangerous and we don't wish it, that there are things that sometimes it is necessary and new things can come from that, uh, from God's spirit being present, God's courage being present with us as we listen to God's spirit. And so with your little cylinder today, we are going to light it on fire carefully with the uh, supervision of a parent. Uh, if you can see mine, it's hard to show you, but um, you're gonna wanna have your base. If you can see, lighting up. And then eventually it will lift off and it will be a reminder of God's Holy Spirit, taking away our fears and leading us into courage to be God's people, even when it's scary and even when it's overwhelming. So that is my prayer for you. And as you, as you lift yours up, I was going to tell you to say a little prayer, but you can say it after like I'm going to now. So let's pray together. Pray these words. And you can say them out loud with me, okay? God, give us the courage to listen to your spirit. Let us lead the way with your love. And all God's people said, Amen. The first reading is from Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 13. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. 
to another faith by the same Spirit, to other, another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. Here ends the readings. As the first Pentecost day arrived, the followers of Jesus were gathered together in one room. And suddenly there was a loud noise, described like the roar of a violent wind, that filled the room. And they looked at one another, and they saw resting upon each other tongues of flame. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in other languages. And as they spoke in other languages, those who were gathered in Jerusalem for the festival, they heard the good news of Jesus Christ in their own native tongue, and they were able to bring it with them when they returned to their homes. And so like a fire driven by the wind, the Jesus movement spread throughout the world. About 20 years later, in a seaport named Corinth, in a spirit-filled group of believers, they received a letter, they received a word from their founder, a man named Paul, and Paul wrote to them about what it means to be the church. Paul said to them, no one can say Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit. Paul reminded them that, that even their faith in Christ was a gift. And along with that faith, the one Lord, the one Spirit, the one God gave them a variety of gifts, gifts that were for the benefit of all, gifts that were diverse and different, but each one was needed. Each one was necessary. Each one was essential for the sake of building up the one body of Christ. You know, I don't know if he realized that, that he did this or not, but our friend Jack Halverson preached a pretty good sermon on this text in his 52-story segment last Sunday. It's now on YouTube if you want to check it out. Jack described how his upbringing steeped in the gospel confirmed his faith in Christ. And how he now lives out his faith by using his spiritual gifts in service to others because we asked him, because the Holy Spirit asked him. And so the Holy Spirit leads us to faith in Christ, gives us spiritual gifts to be used for the benefit of all, and asks us to use them. You know, on that first Pentecost day, I imagine it was a time of uncertainty. Jesus' disciples were wondering what the future held for them. They were wondering what it means now that Jesus had ascended and that Jesus was joining them in a new way. It was a time of transition. It was a time of discernment. It was a time of trying to learn and know where God was leading them. And we all have those moments in our lives. I think about our, our high school seniors as they graduate in this unusual time or those who are finishing their university studies. It happens to us if we move away from home or if we enlist in the military. It happens to us when we get married or when we have children, if we have a health crisis or when we retire from our jobs. And what happens to us is those are times in our life when we really think about who we are. What is our identity? Who are we really in the new circumstances that we find ourselves in? At the beginning of this quarantine, we were really discerning our identity as a church. And we have all of these challenges and changes that have been thrust upon us. I, I kind of describe it as I've, I learned how to be a pastor and I did it for 25 years in one way. And all of a sudden it was like I had to start all over again. And it was true for all of us, right? It's true for all of us, for the whole church, for the whole body of Christ. And so in the May Star, I wrote this. I wrote, some things don't change. 
God has called us to proclaim the gospel, to love and serve the neighbor and the world, and to support and to encourage one another. This week I was doing some reading and preparation for, for preaching, and Mary Hinkle Shore, who is rector and dean of Southern Seminary, she was comment, commenting on this text, and she wrote this. She says, How do we know the work of the Holy Spirit among us? The Spirit proclaims Jesus as Lord, offers its gifts to the church for the common good, and activates love for the neighbor. And so I think what that means, and what Paul is saying to the Corinthians, and what Paul is saying to us is that the Holy Spirit is here among us. This day, Bethlehem, the Holy Spirit is here. You know, Paul said there, there's a way to know, right? There's kind of a, a litmus test, if you will. A way to know if, if a movement of the Holy Spirit is, is indeed present in the life of the church. And the way we know, Paul says, is that no one says that Jesus is cursed in the Holy Spirit. And no one can say Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit. My internship supervisor told me once that the Apostle Paul was the only Lutheran in the Bible. And there might not be a more Lutheran passage in the entire Bible than no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Martin Luther famously said in a line that you probably remember from your confirmation days, I believe that I cannot believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him, but the Holy Spirit calls me through the gospel. In other words, faith is a work of the Holy Spirit. Faith is a gift from God that can only be radically received. Faith enables our lips to proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Faith moves our hearts so that we indeed believe that God has raised him from the dead for us and for our salvation. You know, these gifts that the Spirit gives us, they're given to each one of us. Every single one of you who's baptized has a spiritual gift. And the thing is, these spiritual gifts, they're for the good of all. They don't make us better than others. They're not for our own enrichment, but they're for the benefit of others. And they're, they're for building up the body of Christ. You know, each of the baptized is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in order to bring us together. Mary Hinkle Shore once again writes, Individuals receive gifts from the Spirit, yet the gift is for the body as a whole. This implies that if a gift cannot be shared and shared for the good of others, that it is not from the Spirit. And so we have been more mindful of our identity as the church, more mindful usual than usual, as we've reimagined what it means to be the body of Christ, as we distance ourselves, our own bodies from one another. And, you know, some of the things that, that we've discovered at this time are, are things that we knew all along. The church isn't a building. And we're not closed. The church is the body of Christ engaged in the work of God for the sake of the neighbor and for the sake of the world. And so on this Pentecost Sunday, we see how the Holy Spirit continues to fan the flames of our faith in God as we proclaim Jesus as Lord and as we share our individual gifts for the sake of one another and for the sake of the neighbor and for the world. You know, in his wonderful story, Jack, he, he described the fellowship that we share as believers, as followers of Jesus. Jack said it was kind of like a, the embers of a fire that, that tend to smolder when they're isolated, but when they're together, that they roar up into flame. Now, last week, Tammy and I got away, and it was nice. It was really nice just to get away for a while, and we settled along the Crowing River north of Staples, and we spent a lot of time just sitting around a campfire, watching the flames. And they would die down, and the wood would start to smolder. 
And as they logs did this, one of us would get up out of our chair and walk over to the fire and grab a branch and turn the log over and push them together again. And, and pretty soon the fire would, would roar up, the wind stoking the embers, and we would have this new blaze bringing warmth and light to us. You know, even as we, we socially distance and, and even as we consider who we are now in this new age, there's one thing that stays the same, Bethlehem. We are the body of Christ and the Holy Spirit is among us. Without this spirit of the living God, we are, we are like dead stumps. We are burned over ashes. But the Holy Spirit ignites us, warms us, makes us glow with the light of Christ. And gathered by God's love, the Spirit, like a great rushing wind fanning the flames, enables us to bring warmth into a world that has grown, grown cold, enables us to be light in darkness. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all God's beloved across creation, let us lift up our laments, praises, and prayers. For the spirit of peace that calms our minds and stills our life, 
we give you thanks. For the spirit of love that touches hearts and reaches out, we give you thanks. For the spirit of joy that lifts our soul and gives us faith, we give you thanks. For the spirit of power, that gift of grace for this your church, we give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for your forgiveness, Lord, when we forget the power that lies within and trust instead upon our human strength. Remind us of that glorious day when your spirit transformed the lives of those who hid in fear into people of power. Renew these hearts which have grown cold with the flames of your fire, as on that Pentecost, that this might be the church you desire. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are mindful this day of those whose lives are threatened by unholy fires, caused by violence and anger. For those who are afflicted by the fire of racism, we ask you to pour out the waters of your healing to extinguish their pain. For those whose lives and livelihoods are threatened by the fires of rioting and protest, we pray for safety and the coming of a true peace rooted in justice. For all who are on the front lines of justice working and peacemaking across this country and across the world, we ask that you pour out your strength and courage upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up to you all who are in need of healing, physical, mental, and spiritual. Blow your breath of life upon them, that they may return to wholeness. We pray especially for Kurt Halverson, Brenda Getch, Robin Ruthenbeck, Leanne Peabody Taggart, Jack Christensen, Dorothy Nadell, Kathy Young, Alice Haugen, Catherine Sargent, Pastor Don Roberts, Bonnie, and his caregivers. Comfort those who mourn with your gentle spirit, especially the family and friends of Howard Prouse. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you now to share a sign of peace with those in your household and to reach out with a greeting of peace by text, phone call, or email. As we prepare for communion, I invite you to mirror what I do as we say the words of institution, raising your elements that you have prepared along with me. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, 
blessed it and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Be fed. Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, you have fed us with your word and sacrament. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen all who receive this sacrament and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the Spirit of Christ. Amen. Now may the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. In the name of God, Parent, Son, and Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you.